The next step is to make this DTFT spectrum discrete by sampling it. Uniformly sampling one period of DTFT into n samples. The sample DTFT is called as a discrete Fourier transform. In other words, DFT provides uniformly sam spaced samples of DTFT. What is so significant about DFT? DFT plays a major role in DSP as it produces a discrete frequency domain representation while the spectrum of DTFT is continuous. And secondly, DFT being discrete, its numerical computation becomes easier. These aspects of DFT leads to its extensive use in DSP. The DTFT equation needs to get modified to get DFT expression. We now know one period of DTFT that is 2 pi is sampled into n samples which gives us a relation for omega as 2 pi by n into k where k is the DFT index. Substituting this discrete frequency into DTFT relation. At the same time, the infinite sum in DTFT becomes finite from 0 to n minus 1 in the DFT equation. And finally, the DFT is denoted using the discrete base as xk. This is the DFT relation. DFT provides information over discrete number of frequencies. So we need to correlate precisely which frequencies these are. The discrete signal and its DFT having n samples each is shown. If the spacing between the samples in Xn is T, then these n frequency samples reside in the frequency range between 0 to Fs, where Fs is called as the sampling frequency. As seen with total n samples in DFT and the frequency stuck between 0 to Fs, we can associate that spacing between each frequency sample as Fs by n. Thus, with the n sample corresponding to sampling frequency, each sample corresponds to a frequency of Fs by n into k. Let's interpret this equation at various instants of k. The sample at k as 0 corresponds to the DC component that is 0 frequency. Similarly, the sample at k is equal to 1 corresponds to analog frequency of Fs by n and so on. Thus, discrete frequency samples between 0 to n minus 1 corresponds to frequencies between 0 to sampling frequency. This is this way the last DFT sample corresponds to sampling frequency. This yields corrupted result as there can be no frequencies above the Nyquist rate. The Nyquist rate if not followed, the original signal cannot be exactly reconstructed from its samples. Nyquist criteria is followed with k in the range 0 to n by 2. The remaining DFT samples from n by 2 to n minus 1 corresponds to negative frequencies. Consider DFT spectrum. Note that the data between 0 to Fs by 2 correspond to the actual frequency components of the spectrum, whereas the other half spectrum is the mirror image. Thus, what we finally deduce from the spectrum is that DFT is symmetric about the center point. Inverse DFT relates back the discrete frequency to its discrete time signal. Note that the only difference between the forward and inverse transformations are the change in the sign in the exponential and secondly the factor 1 by n. This IDFT relation provides the reconstruction of the signal Xn from the samples of the spectrum Xk. 
what we observe is that the reconstructed signal is periodic in nature. For better understanding, let's put all this together. As studied, DTFD relates an aperiodic discrete signal with its periodic continuous frequency spectrum, whereas DFD provides uniformly spaced samples of DTFD. The inverse DFT replicates the temporal sequence periodically. Thus, sampling process in frequency domain affects the time domain signal by making it periodic.